very good morning folks welcome everyone so i'm now live and lots of interesting things i want to share with you all now a lot of a lot of people over here so hi guys a small introduction would do good so you guys are full time traders i'm guessing or part time traders i'm guessing so this webinar is a live session with me just just to have a chat with you all when markets are on so sometimes people say that you know mark you have your webinars your youtube videos your paid courses but i want you when live markets are there so this is this is it so let's let's talk about live markets let's talk in general your general doubts overall if you have any particular stock you want me to talk about you can ask that which one thing i generally don't <laughs> you don't see me doing asking people this question but yes we can talk about things so if you have any questions there's a button out there and you can find out on your screen how to ask a question right and if you want to raise your hands at any given point of time you can raise your hand also okay so how many of you are looking at markets from a bullish point of view raise your hands let's have a test am i audible right so yes that is one of the stocks on my list so i have let's start with my uh, you know overall okay so puneet thinks it's bullish that's great let's start with my overall uh, assessment of things which i have i'm here to talk about primarily so i was looking at the pharma sector and we know there's an intermarket correlation between the pharma sector as well as the rupee dollar right because in the event that the dollar gets strong compared to the rupee we often see the pharma and it sector going up now we have to understand that stocks always lead stocks are leading one of the most leading asset classes compared to bonds commodities etc and stocks discount expectations so we had already seen a lot of lot of bullishness which had started to happen in pharma actually even before actually even before the usd inr broke out towards new highs now usd uh, usd that is the dollar index broke out to new highs right i spoken about it in one of my past videos and after that we have seen various pharmaceutical sector stock i have been talking about a few stocks so i'll pick that up first as i showed was sun pharma so sun pharma as we can see that it is a very very strong trend now on the weekly chart on the weekly chart when two lows are very very close to each other right and those who have attended my sessions on candlesticks or my paid course they know that if there is a bullish belt hold line candle on the weekly chart and in the zone of this candle there is a hammer candle on the weekly chart this becomes a very strong bullish evidence and it is actually taking out major weekly resistance resistance zone and these major weekly resistance zone which have been tested once twice and thrice these are being taken out at once right these are being taken out at once and now we see that there is a very high volume candle which is breaking out from here so yes sun pharma is overall super bullish for me and thank you for again asking about this mr javan if you have anything uh, else or if anybody has anything else you can go and ask about it now coming to aura pharma which i have been also speaking about in one of my videos recently and this stock has showed a inverse head and shoulder pattern now to some people it might not seem like the most the most perfect inverse head and shoulder pattern but it is quite quite good and it is showing me enough evidences the most important part what i like about the inverse head and shoulder pattern in this scenario is that i like when i do my wave counts i like the sub waves which are coming together so for example if i have to cut open this area okay so i just cut open this area and i will show you that when it has gone up 
of course breaking of resistance has happened over here right this is the physical part of the pattern and those who have attended the free webinar on Elliot, check out my youtube video if you are uh, on youtube checking out my just a second this video go to my channel and check out my other videos okay somebody is asking for walk farm also i'll come to that ankuji no problem so yeah so again the subwave counts are something which were very important to me over here and the way we saw a structure building i was speaking to my students just two days back we were talking about bank nifty and we we're talking about price structure when there's a structure building it gives me a better clarity to go ahead and find the health of the trend now if the trend is healthy if the trend is healthy eventually it will go and win the swimming competition if you are healthy you will go and win the basketball competition so if the trend is healthy these structures represent a healthy trend to me eventually it will show its power eventually it will show its power and it is showing a lot of power which were the ideal entry points were around 636 got all the way to 705 just in a few days so this is something noteworthy now let's come to walk pharma since we are discussing the pharma sector and before that let me just talk a little bit about structure since i started about it so i was speaking to my students about bank nifty and we were looking at the hourly chart as well as the 15 minute for the sake of simplicity i will keep it to the hourly chart in this case and we were talking about the fact that bank nifty is coming and is possibly going to break these resistance area we're talking about this day and then we ended up having a conversation in our students group where we were where all the old students are that these support areas have been excellent and some of us took trades also to go long but the movement from here to here lacks a price structure there is a lacking price structure so a lot of people talk about gaps gaps need to be covered there's nothing like that gaps need to be covered but a gap is generally a opening a closing on the previous day and a opening the next day with a certain gap when no trading happened when that area is coming covering it can happen because of one reason that is the gap was a misplaced gap it was not the correct structure anyway this also acts like a one way move if this happened overnight i would call it a gap but again, it is misplaced because there is no structure where the gap is breaking out from. And when I say structure, I need something healthy. I need something healthy. And therefore, therefore, we decided not to go long, and which ended up being a good decision overall with the uh, health of the structure, etc. Although here once there was a cue that if we really break out, we can go hi higher, but that did not happen. And we are eventually now going down. So great opportunities to sell. Sometimes not do it, not knowing, okay, is not good. And a lot of times, doing what not to do is even better. So doing what not to do is even better. Of course, still here you would have still got some money. But I'm saying doing what not to do because I saw a lot of analysts coming on television or internet talking about, uh, you know, with due respect to everyone, talking about a 500 point move if this area gets break out a 500 point move in bank nifty and it's the opposite which is happening so structure also gives you the and helps you to place your stop losses it gives you valid reasons and valid places to place your stop losses and uh, so now we'll move on to anguji's question by the way if anybody wants to ask anything feel most welcome to do so right we have some of my students over here as well. great so Let's go to Walk Pharma. Okay. Again, this stock is representing to me a pattern which is the cup and handle pattern. Now, few things are noteworthy over here. I have been following this stock since many years myself. Not that I have to trade on it very, very regularly. I trade on it occasionally when I see very high probability things happen. But yes, again, in this scenario, I saw the weekly chart coming just like any other pharma sector. Now, one thing to be noted with Walk Pharma is that Walk Pharma uh, and a few other stocks, Ajanta Pharma, these started moving in the later, later cycle because Lupin Sun Pharma, 
these started moving first and these were still going on a downtrend till then right so some things to be noted that when things have a deeper correction okay so when walk pharma so let's look at the dates let let's talk with the numbers and the dates so this is 27th july it is still near a very low right this is 27th july weekly chart perfect now let's go to open in on 27th july uh, and where did Lupin bottom out? Two months back, right? And by the time we were in July, Lupin had given a correction to the overall trend. Whereas Walk Pharma, Walk Pharma is, Lupin had given a correction, whereas Walk Pharma is nearing its lows, right? And by the time, and the same thing goes for Sun Pharma. So when the correction in Sun Pharma is happening sideways, Work Pharma is going down and when everything is going up, Work Pharma is actually coming out. So we will see continuation patterns for Sun Pharma. So Sun Pharma will have continuation patterns and Work Pharma will have more of reversal patterns, more of reversal patterns. Now two things with reversal patterns. One is that it should have a supporting evidence if there is not a double testing. Well, in this case, there was a cup and handle pattern. So let's just draw a line. There's a cup and handle pattern, right? And in this cup and handle pattern, we can clearly see, we can clearly see that it has broken out and there has been a sideways movement right after that, right? So this stock has uptrended after the breakout and is expected to uptrend. The immediate supports uh, at around 632 zone right we see this zone has been tested earlier as well and has been an important zone so things to note down things to note down very important right uh, anyone else asking about anything but in particular you can message so a lot of people are here with me yeah and speaking of, some people are asking me, sir, talk about Nifty trend. Well, in one of my videos recently on the YouTube channel, I had spoken about Nifty. Uh, I had actually shown charts regarding moving averages, right? So I was showing moving averages of the 2060 and 200 period. 2060 and 200 period. So I will just put the averages on my chart right now. So I put a 20 period average just now, right? I put, uh, I'll come to that after I finish this explanation, Ashokji. Thanks for asking. And then I put a 60 period average. Sixty period average and I'm able to I'm able to look at this line, right? There is something interesting just about to share. I'm putting the 200 period average. Now, when averages come together, when averages come together, that means that volatility is crunching in multiple time frames. I repeat myself. When averages are coming together, volatility is crunching in different time frames so if the 200 period moving average price comes around that and hovers around that that means volatility is crunching in a very long term trend and when during the smaller medium and long term time frame all the volatility crunches and then there is a exponential move on either direction it tends to be more volatile that means it tends to be more one sided now one thing to be noticed over here in the occasions in the occasions where you will see where you will see that the market has shown us that all the moving averages are widely spread apart okay now let's look at the logic and i want you to participate with me i say 20 moving average is the short term i'm saying 60 moving average 20 moving average is green 60 moving average is white in color 
and the chrome yellow in color 200 moving average 200 moving average is long term so when i say these three things and i want you all to participate with me when i say the price is coming and hovering about 20 period moving average price is coming and hovering about 20 period moving average what does it mean what does it mean there is a short term crunch in volatility medium term crunch in volatility or long term crunch in volatility what does it mean short term medium term or long term perfect short term that's the answer thanks for participating guys now when i say that the 20 period moving average i know some people are having a problem with the internet maybe being slow on their side this video will be on youtube don't worry and so the 20 period moving average the 60 period moving average if both if the price comes near these two and there is a sideways movement around those moving average that is indicating to us that the short term as well as the medium term as well as the medium term moving averages are showing us that low volatility period so let's just look at the white line and the green line so whenever the white line and green line are coming together showing us periods of slow movement sideways movement not much movement the it's more range bound right when these are coming together not much movement we saw excuse me we saw this patch of move happen not much movement right and each time all of these three as i said are coming together show us bigger movements to come in the coming four days because volatility rises and then comes down expands then crunches expands then crunches etc so in such a scenario when we look at the markets i had explained this in the recent boot camp which was like a fundraiser for kerala flood relief also uh, a lot of people participated and again thank you all of you for doing that uh, we had looked at this particular area where the market is right now and we could clearly see we could clearly see that all moving averages are far from each other all moving averages are far from each other now what do what do we guess from this when all moving averages are distant from each other that means volatility has risen in the shorter time frame as well as the medium and the long term time frame are in distance with it so prices tend to revert to the mean and when prices tend to the re revert to the mean we are very likely this indicates to us that we are very likely to see some kind of correction down move or a wide sideways movement happen before we go higher right because if it happens is at the minimum even if there's not a deep correction if that happens at a minimum what is it showing to us it is showing to us that it is coming down going sideways and absorbing the correction in time right so this is one view i have from the indicator point of view and for those who know there is a very special kind of course which is about to come out called the indicator factory a free introductory webinar is of the course you can find the link below in the description box of my youtube channel and yes so we see on the hourly chart we see uh, that the index is actually not showing a lot of power but yeah this is just for the moment and whatever i said if there is a cluster of candles which goes sideways for the next five to six days and then a further fall happens it can happen like that also indicators are just showing to me not how it would unfold but what are the extreme end of things because this particular indicator is a trend following indicator and when i put a three moving average i'm making it a mean reverting indicator also so different kinds of indicators are there so in the free webinar i'll be talking more about that and uh, dr reddy so mr ashok is asking about dr reddy let's check out dr reddy so the chart of dr reddy again one of the pharmaceutical stocks well <coughs> compared to the other charts currently compared to the other charts the structure buildup is not really that similar there has been a steep fall and there has been a bottoming which has happened but it is bullish 
but I would not keep a finger on any kind of targets at the moment, is what I can say. It is bullish, no doubt it is uptrend, no doubt it is strong, no doubt there is showing volume, but I will not put a target over here, put my finger on it over here right now. So this is one of, I can say, this is not a laggard, this is not a weak stock, but I like the structure better when it comes to things like Sun Pharma, right? Well, uh, chart formations do have their own implications, Ashokji. Uh, what you are saying, it, it makes sense. But then until it happens according to a certain shorter term wave structure, I would not prefer it that way. In the long term, yes, you can say it is happening. So my sense and hypothesis is until I see proper breakouts above 2,600, my hypothesis is that if there is enough structure before that to gather the steam for the move to build, I would wait for that. Right? Right? Right. Okay, Angurji, very good question. So what I can do is, so Angurji is saying that I have some indicators which I've been talking about and uh, see everything uh, and, and he wants to for me to take a live trade now, of course trading for me is a very important thing and uh, this purpose of the webinar is not to trade i never trade to impress anyone to be very honest a lot of students ask me sir can we see while you are trading okay am i audible to everyone is, is it all good am i audible properly hello hello yeah i'm audible yeah, so somebody said I'm not audible. Please take your internet connection, guys. Yeah, so I can I cannot take really a trade right now because my trade has to come about, okay? And my query list always starts flashing in front of me, different stocks, and right now the query list in the live markets, if I'm running, if I'm running, then it is, I prefer using the hourly ones. So at the end of every hour, it will show me a life query. But what I can show you for the better part right now, I can show you an example of something which something which is a part of what I use, is a part of what I'm using. And if you can gauge something from it, it is good. And one second, so I will come to that. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I will come to that. Where is this gone? Okay, I have to unpause my screen. Here we go. Okay. So there is something which is there I'm using, which is a part of the overall picture, not the entire picture, right? And each one, each one of these indicators are basically parameters which represent something. And what they represent at what moment needs to be interpreted by someone who is actually using that indicator in a certain manner, right? Now, once you interpret that idea, then it is fine. You can use it by using your parameters and uh, then you can change the time frames and add filters to it like I do. Like for example, there is another indicator which I use in conjunction with it, which filters out most of the area this indicator is showing me sideways movement. So whenever it is going to show me a arrow on the downside and it, the other indicator is not going to run the filter for me and say that, okay, you're allowed, then I will go short. But if the other indicator is telling me that this is sideways, I will not go short. So what the other indicator is, how these things are working, I will show you in the webinar. I'll show you in the free webinar with examples. So 
you know you hold on for that those times and yes uh, they do work out pretty well if you design them pretty well the whole purpose of the course on indicator factory is basically to teach you how to make your own system and then give you a 20 day free trial of what i use or what i have made Ashok ji is asking a pertinent question. Ashok ji is asking, he says, do you use supports and resistance on the hourly basis and the daily chart basis? Well, yes, I do. Of course, I do. So those those arrows are only a part of my system designing. They have got nothing to do with uh, basic technical analysis, or they are not based on highs or lows. No, Ashok ji, they are not based on highs or lows. they're simply a part of my you can say the systems i'm building the systems i've built and i just sort of did one indicator opened up in front of you to show you and that indicator is also not a indicator but you will find you will have to make the parameters according to your analysis and research so my parameter for every indicator is different right like for example the rsi you seeing right now over here and if you put an rsi on your screen my rsi will well look very different from your rsi because i've skewed each and every parameter in a different manner so my rsi will give me less signals but when it gives me signals it is going to give me very very extreme signals so compare it with your rsi i would request each one of you to put your rsi on screen so if you see whenever it is going towards the 80 zone even just beyond 70 it is giving me extreme selling selling ideas extreme selling points again extreme selling points so my rsi is very different from an rsi somebody else is using and uh, i don't like see a lot of people blame technical analysis they come and then they bad mouth technical analysis but nobody really does the work to do better for them people come and say rsi over oh, over so doesn't work so you can make it work if you can make it work then the job is done right no no i'm not saying that it will be different on different time frames i'm saying the parameter is different right a parameter is different now how many of you raise your hands who how many of you actually tried how many of you tried putting your rsi or opened up a chart of uh, say bank of baroda right now and compared it with how my rsi is looking three people four people right so that means you you guys are putting in the effort so that's good and i'm sure the other ones are also because of which you are here good i see so many people raising their hands paying attention to this so when you are using indicators there are ways you can change the parameters and those changes changing the parameters have a certain logic right no uh, no ashok ji that you are talking about the different range that is not that is analysis that is not the parameters okay that is a possibility but that is not something i will make the market will show me right so never mind never mind but you you get the point that i am looking for extreme points when i want rsi to solve a purpose for me it should solve a purpose for me it should not become a problem for me most people just apply the indicator just things as they are given and you know in many cases it is very good to apply the indicator just as it is given just exactly as the parameter should be but in a lot of cases it is not healthy to apply the indicators if they don't make any sense to you right so i personally like to have the indicator for what it is or if i don't have it i will make it if that work requires work and no complaining i will do it so uh, the whole job of indicators to make my job a little more objective little more clear basic easy but to make it easy i have to do some work right so guys uh, just taking a pause for a minute and uh, waiting for you to ask more questions to me guys go ahead girls go ahead all the uh, ladies and gentlemen over here you can go ahead ask me questions there is a message box where you can type a message the question will straight come to me i'm waiting once i have two three questions then i'll start answering
So I have a lot of questions lined up. Uh, one after the other, I'll be taking. Okay. So I think Ashok Ji, Shakti Ji are saying why I'm using a different indicator and if I can share my setting. Well, the reason is I don't want to get everybody biased. Okay. Everything has a different setting. Every basically every chart is a different setting. Okay. So for example, for example, I'll take up an example. Uh, I'm putting it on the daily chart to make it easier for you, right? And after that, I'll come to other questions which are there, right? So, man, are you talking about Titan, right? Okay. Oh. Okay. I'm coming to that. Uh, so how many of you are here from Calcutta? How many of you from Kolkata here? Because that's my city. Anyone here? Give me a shout out. Give me a raise of hand. Nobody from Kolkata here? Anyway, so I'm having a workshop in Kolkata this September. So I thought I'll just make a preview of it. One second, guys. My apps learning together. Yeah. So I got the RSI. So let's look at the relative strength index. Now, the default period for RSI is 14. So let's make a basic one with 14. Then add another subgraph where we let's put an RSI which is less than 14. Let's do it less than 14. Let's make it uh, half of 14. Let's make it seven. Right. And let's compare what is different between the RSI seven and RSI 14. Now, by the look of it, does it seem very different? No. And uh, can anybody say which one is which? If you can't, then believe me. Is the look of it very different? Not very different. But the thing is that if I'm looking at the daily chart, okay, and I'm looking at RSI, the RSI should not go too extreme for me unless the price is going too extreme. What happens in case of the faster RSI, the seven RSI right in front of us, okay? Which one is the seven RSI? The seven RSI is this one because it is more sensitive to buy price extremes, right? So when the seven RSI is more sensitive to price extremes, that means RSI is reached, wait a second. Yeah, this is 76 over here and this is way beyond 80. It's reached way beyond 80. So when these extremes happen, the RSI seven is more sensitive and therefore it tells me that this is happening. Now, how I use my interpretation of a slower RSI. For a slower RSI, I will say that when it comes to the extreme, that is the time to worry. But when it is entering the overboard zone, that is not the time to worry because it can stay along in the overboard zone. It came to the overboard zone right here. So if somebody is using the RSI for a purpose of seeing where the prices are in the extreme overbought oversold, it won't really make sense to have a faster RSI. Rather, you have a slower one, right? So this is one of the examples. Now, coming to Sumit's question regarding Titan. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to plot the moving averages at the moment because I want to talk about the view on the chart itself. So the view on this chart as far as Titan is concerned, right? The view on the chart is basically that an overall weekly trend has reversed, uh, shown me a reversal candle. Now there is a high possibility that it can go further deeper down. So in a small span of time, I'm, I can't do the wave count analysis see so much so fast right now in front of you. I have to sit with the chart. But yes, we can look for bearish developments and bearish. 
So I won't say you go and sell right now, but if there's a structure development, then you could have could could go short on it. Like I would have gone short over here, even if I didn't see the daily chart. This these would have been a good setup to go short around nine zero seven. So currently there is a possibility of further downside, but we have to wait. And my RSI, excuse me. Is there a sound coming? Yeah, my RSI is really not showing me that this is the best time to go long because this is, uh, sorry, this is the best time to go short because this is an, standing at an extreme, right? So when things are standing at an extreme, you want to wait it out a little bit. If it will go sideways, if it will go sideways and then go further down, that means the momentum will get absorbed in time. So that's my view on Titan. Anyone else, any questions? Because uh, time is running a little bit. And thanks uh, so much for asking that question. Time is running a little bit. So I'll get on to my other agendas for the day if there are no more questions. I plan to come online sometimes. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Ankurji, Ashokji, everybody. Thank you. Yes, Suman, so the 872 support zone is there. I can see that. Thank you, guys. And uh, enjoy. Uh, see you sometime soon. And the webinar, I'll share my Telegram channel link. Uh, the webinar will be there coming up on this Sunday morning. So the free webinar, all of you are welcome to join. And I'll be speaking more about indicators over there. And we have all have this learning experience. As far as markets are concerned, guys, always trade with clarity. Clarity is prime most important. You can do anything, anywhere. And you can find extreme of movements happening all the time. But you have to trade with clarity. You have to also stick to your trade with clarity. So on that note, Take care, goodbye, and I will see you around. Enjoy. Thank you everyone for joining.